Welcome to Custom Reads. Let's start with the story. How I uncovered his secret romance and planned my divorce. One day, he accidentally sent me a screenshot of Amazon orders meant for our kids. But at the bottom of the screen was a delivery addressed to a woman. Naturally, the concerned wife in me dove into his search history and emails, and there it all was. His upcoming November trip was revealed to be a romantic getaway, but this current one. It's a luxury escape, complete with couples massages, cooking classes, and monogrammed bathrobes from Etsy. He even sent her a Christmas box of gifts, including sexy lingerie, and planned a January trip to Las Vegas. My anger was boiling over but I kept my cool. So here's the plan, he left this morning for his so-called work trip, but before he did, I gathered all the evidence of his affair. Over the past four weeks, I collected every email, credit card statement, reservation and confirmation. I penned a ten-page letter, sealed it in an envelope, and tucked it inside the lining of his suitcase. I'll be sending a group text to him and his mistress as soon as he checks in, letting them know to enjoy their trip, and that the letter in his suitcase contains news of my decision for a divorce. I've even written a special section just for her, so I'll be emailing her the letter too. He's currently airborne and my group text is set to go out this evening. Stay tuned. Update. His flight landed 1-1-2 hours ago. He told me he would text me when he landed, and he has yet to do so. I've texted him twice, they were delivered, but not read. I checked our phone records, and he texted both me and her during his layover. His email shows no Uber receipt from his final destination airport to his hotel. She must have picked him up. That's something I probably should have clarified in my op. She lives in the state he is visiting so he flew alone. I will be sending a group text to both him and his mistress in two hours, as that will be 4 p.m. their time and check-in. Update number two. I sent pictures of our children, and he did not respond. Foy I, he is in the middle of the desert. My texts are going through green, which puts a monkey wrench in my plan for a group text to him and his mistress. Need suggestions. Should I call the hotel? Connect right to their room. I work so hard for this, it has to be tonight. Help! Update number 3. Thank you to everyone standing by and waiting. My best friend has come to my house to help me through this. It seems my texts are going through green undelivered, but when my friend tried it was blue and delivered. He has blocked me I guess that helps his guilt. The plan now is to call the hotel. I will wait a few minutes after check-in to make the call. Very soon. Please, stand by. Update number 4. Like most of you predicted, he does not care. He had zero answers to my questions. That was the most hurtful part. But guess what? I have all the emotional support and economic support, so I'm not mad. Every question I asked, he had no response because his mistress was sitting there. I suspect when he is home alone with me, his answers will be different. I've made sure that he will not emotionally and financially fuck me because I have secured support from family and friends. He can go fuck himself. Update number 5. I called his hotel room and ended up speaking to his mistress, which made me completely lose my composure. When he called me back, he showed no remorse and said a divorce was inevitable, but didn't fight me on it. I was expecting him to be upset, but he wasn't at all. I started packing his things and with the help of some great friends, moved everything into the garage. The rinse I guess. The next morning, I woke up feeling shattered. My house was a mess from the night before, photos torn off walls, his belongings scattered on the floor and random objects broken in my fury. After a night's rest, I'm starting to see things more clearly. The man I spoke to on the phone was unrecognizable, it's like the person I thought I knew was a complete lie. He seemed more concerned about getting to see our kids, which is fine, but he avoided answering any of my questions or admitting to anything. I suspect his lack of remorse was because he was with his mistress, if I confronted him at home, I think his reaction would have been different. When he returns Monday night, I expect him to act differently. I also found out from the mistress that she's recently separated. Calling my mom was tough. Even though she and my dad have always been supportive, admitting my choice of spouse was a mistake felt like a personal failure. Maybe it all comes down to a poor decision I made 13 years ago, but it doesn't really matter now. I've just two days to clear out his things. Now I'm wondering who to tell, his dad, his mom, his best friend or his co-workers? I wish there were a guide for this, because I'm feeling lost and humiliated. At least he didn't take his house keys with him, so I won't need to change the locks. I'll just remove his keys and move on. When he comes home Monday night, the doors will be locked, 
his stuff will be in the garage, and we'll be done. Preparing for the return I feel incredibly lucky to have such amazing friends and family by my side. They've been nothing short of wonderful during this tough time. Just yesterday, they helped me pack up all of his clothes and move them to the garage. His collectibles are now neatly stored, waiting to be evaluated. It was a long tiring day, but it needed to be done. Honestly I doubt he ever imagined I'd go to such lengths to cut him out of my life. When I confronted him, I was filled with so much emotion, that he might have thought I wanted to make amends. Fat chance of that happening. His flight is scheduled to land just before 10 p.m. tonight. And when he walks through that door, he'll find it locked. He told me over the phone that he was just grabbing his car and leaving, and I'm holding him to that. I should mention, the house is solely in my name. When we first started looking he had no credit, so everything is under my maiden name. Even health insurance, car insurance, cell phones and utilities, all in my name. The only thing he has under his name is his car. I think he's starting to realize that this could come back to haunt him. I really don't want a messy divorce, but I'm open to hearing what he has to say and trying to find common ground wherever I can. He clearly doesn't care anymore, so I'm going to shift my mindset and treat this like a business deal. The dust has settled. A few days have passed since he came back. For someone who meticulously planned a secret getaway with his mistress, he certainly didn't put much thought into his return home. Ever since Monday he's been holed up in the basement. I let him watch the kids open their Christmas gifts, but now he's back to hiding away down there. We've reached out to three mediators and have meetings set up next week to kick off the mediation process. It's clear this is over. When he got back, we had a conversation that quickly turned into an argument, and he actually brought up the idea of reconciliation. I couldn't help it, I just laughed. I laughed so hard I thought I might cry. He started placing blame, claiming our marriage had been over for a long time. Well, that was news to me. His affair was nothing but selfish and cowardly. He didn't want to face the tough conversations about counseling or divorce, so he took the easy and fun route. Let's be honest, he loves being the center of attention, with two women fawning over him. But I'm not playing that game anymore. She can't have him, and what a prize he is, I've been pretty calm while discussing the terms of our separation, but my biggest issue is her. He can keep seeing her, but I have serious concerns about her character. What kind of woman knowingly gets involved with a married man who has kids? When I confronted her on the phone last Saturday, and asked that very question, she was completely silent. I asked if she felt any remorse, and it was like the lion went dead. That's not the kind of person I want around my children. People who can't acknowledge their wrongdoings are not good people. I found comfort in my friends and family, and I'm grateful for everyone who recommended the book Chump Lady. I'm halfway through and it's been so helpful. Thank you to everyone for the overwhelming support. To the naysayers who think I'm an unfit wife remember, cheaters cheat because they choose to. Thanks again, everyone. I'm not sure if you want updates on the mediation process or if my story is done, but I'm just happy to have connected with all of you. Where is the fault? If you read the advice out there about dealing with cheaters, it all boils down to one thing, it's not you, they made a choice. My soon-to-be ex insists that things were terrible between us. While we weren't exactly the perfect couple, I thought things were generally good. This whole situation has made me take a hard look at myself, who I am, who I've been, and who I want to be. Could I have done things differently? Sure. Was I perfect? Definitely not. But my actions were never harmful to our marriage they were sacrifices. And now, those sacrifices are being thrown back in my face, and I'm being labeled as neglectful. Is this all just about seeking attention? Is he caught up in a narcissistic need to be adored? He and his new partner are blissfully caught up in the honeymoon phase right now, taking vacations, having late-night chats like teenagers and buying gifts for each other. But what will happen when the reality sets in? What will he do when she realizes he has little patience with kids? Will he ignore a sink full of dirty dishes? Will he forget to pay the phone bill for months while spending money on silly gadgets? Those aren't my concerns anymore, but I'm sure his new partner will notice those issues sooner or later. Maybe then she'll be faced with the same struggles I've dealt with for years. Should she pick up the pieces or should she ignore her responsibilities while catering to his needs? He's told me, someone who's been involved with another woman and spending a fortune on her that I'm to blame for everything. Maybe I am. But what about all those years I spent cleaning up after him? Perhaps if I'd spent two hours talking to him every night, things would be different. But honestly, I'm glad I'm where I am now. 
Looking back, I see just how underappreciated and neglected I truly was. All those years I thought I was being helpful, but in reality, I was just being taken for granted. And this affair? It's just the same old story. This is just a word of advice to all the mess cleaners, excuse makers and spouse sheltering people reading this. Stop. Stop now. I've learned that all the helping is simply them learning how to manipulate you. Draw that line in the sand. Prepare for an uncomfortable situation when they start to stumble under the pressures of real life. But don't lose yourself. I lost myself years ago and it's not a place you want to be. Mediation and the move. We had our first mediation appointment via Zoom yesterday. It was very amicable, but only because I didn't want to fight, and I just wanted this to be over. He apparently wants nothing. Not the house, not the furniture, not what he's entitled to of my pension, he just wants to be done as well. As I've been packing up things in the house to declutter, I've been offering him things but he wants nothing. I suspect the moment our marriage is dissolved, he will be packing up his collectibles and clothing and driving across the country to live with her. I guess I should be okay with this as I don't want to be married to him anymore. It just kills me that he will be moving in with her and helping her raise her two children while mine are fatherless. It makes me so angry. Seething. The man who was abandoned by his father is now doing the same thing. Something he said would never ever happen because of the mental issues it has given him today. Well, it looks like that, as well as almost everything else, was a lie. Again, I take solace in the fact that their honeymoon phase will be short-lived. Reality will smack them both in the face, and she will realize that he can be more hurt than help. While I wish him well and hope the best, our kids deserve more than a Christmas-slash-Easter-slash-one-week-in-the-summer father. No dad at basketball games, cup scouts, birthday parties and school plays. Meanwhile, AP will have him and her children's biological father. I guess nothing in life is fair, and my boys will have to learn that lesson earlier than I had hoped. He's gone. My STBX left yesterday morning to visit her. I told him to go. I didn't want to spend NYE with him, and our COVID circle friends, with whom we celebrate, have zero interest in seeing him either. He booked a flight 30 minutes after I told him to go. My only stipulation was that he be back this weekend as it's my birthday, and I really need a day to myself. I've watched the kids for three weekends now while he went to see his mistress, I thought I at least deserved my birthday to relax. He texted me while he was boarding that he wouldn't be home for my birthday. Well then. He claims that when he booked this, he booked a return for the evening of my birthday. When he tried to change it, he was put on standby, it would cost $1,000 and to change, it was a red eye, etc. The excuses kept coming. He apparently does not realize I have access to the internet as well, and flights are less than $300 and with the airline he flew. I told him this, and he said those flights weren't there when he booked lies, and that he would take care of it. I just want him to be honest. If you don't want to be here for my birthday just say it. If you don't want to spend the day with your children, just tell me, I can't force you to be a parent. I told him the flights were available and affordable, it was his choice to ribble. The ball is in your court. That's all I can do, right? Stay tuned for an update on his return this weekend. NYE Nightmare It was 12, 40 am on NYE, and there was still no call from him. I was angry for no other reason than to explain to the kids that even though daddy wasn't with us, he would call at midnight to talk to them and wish them a happy new year. I was made to be a liar. So I texted my STBX and his excuse was, they are with their friends, I didn't want to bother them. Excuse me? Bother them? You mean you didn't want your kids to bother you? That is what you are really saying. If I was across the country on NYE without my kids, I would have called and done the countdown with them via FaceTime. I think most parents would. But not him. He said, if you had told me that you told the kids I'd call, then I would have. He tried to spin this on me, that I created this mess. Why do I have to tell you that you need to call your children at midnight? This small act said a lot to me. Our children are not a priority. I guess he didn't want to ruin his perfect vacation at his new girlfriend's house with her children. He has a nice new family now. Today is my birthday, and he will return this evening. I told him in my NYE text that I would speak to him on the 12th, our next mediation meeting, because I'm done. I tried to be civil to the kids, but he did not put forth the effort for them. Liar liar, pants on fire. The past few days have been strange. We rarely talk a decision on both our parts, and when we do, it's about mediation, plans moving forward or the kids. We have been civil and communicating well about those items. We are also friendly in front of the children so as not to upset them. 
The situation is strange because we are getting along, there is no arguing, and it's a shared focus to just get through mediation and divorce. That's fine by me. Last night, while I was cleaning the kitchen, I heard him on the phone in the basement. I guess he didn't realize the door was left open by one of the children. Not wanting to be a part of the drama anymore, I went to close the door. At that point, I heard him tell her how crazy I had been acting. Excuse me? We don't speak, and when we do, it's very civil. How is that crazy? Well, he proceeded to tell her about a conversation we had, and he lied about everything. While the conversation part was true, he told her I exploded, I was in a rage, I was crying, etc. None of that was true. He explained how he laughed in my face at my rage, which was also not true because there was no rage. I had told him a while back, before the NYE debacle, that I would start dating eventually, and he proceeded to tell her that I was bragging about guys I was meeting. That is so far from the truth. I slammed the basement door. I'm sure he knows I heard. So I ask, why the need to lie and make me a villain? We aren't staying together, I have no reason to fight with you anymore, that's why we are paying a mediator. Why start lying to your new girlfriend that you love? How is that a good way to start a relationship? I don't know what is happening here. This is my concern, this woman and him are in love, and want to start a life together. Okay that's fine, God bless and congrats. But, this woman only knows me by the stories, which I'm assuming are all lies, he has told her about me. If he does move across the country to be with her, how can I trust a woman who hates me because of misinformation to treat my children properly? I don't care if she hates me personally. I'll still sleep fine at night, but now I'm worried about sending my kids to stay with them in the summer. I want to confront him about this, but I know I can't. Maybe it's not that I can't, but I don't know how. Also, he has told no one we are separated and definitely has not told people why. How come? You initiated this, you cheated, you are happy now, so why can't you tell people? He told his father that he was bringing the kids alone to visit him, because he and I weren't seeing eye to eye at the moment. What? I would assume he's afraid to face the music, or is just finding comfort in the little love bubble he has created. He chooses not to face reality. He has yet to look for an apartment for when the divorce is finalized, but has booked another flight out to see her for Valentine's Day. He is refusing to face reality, and it's so frustrating. Mediation and Empty Promises Yesterday was our second mediation appointment. While it was amicable, there was some obvious tension. The tension was not on my end but more on his. Let me explain. During our first mediation we brought up the topic of whether he might move out of state. At yesterday's meeting, I asked what we would do about custody if he moved to this particular state. When I mentioned the state by name, the mediator was confused. This prompted her to ask him why this state was so far away. His answer? Well, then silence. He couldn't put into words the fact that he was leaving to be with his girlfriend. I had to finally chime in, realizing we were paying by the hour that he was moving to be with his girlfriend. I realized later that was the first time he had semi-confessed to having an affair and a girlfriend to anyone. If you love this person so much, why can't you just say it out loud? That whole situation confuses me. Anyway, when it comes to dollars and cents, I will be fine. He will also be fine. He will have enough to do what he needs, and so will I. We have agreed to a physical custody scenario that allows him weekend and dinner visits. Fine by me, I want my boys to have their father. But, the situation becomes a bit more difficult when he moves. While he said yesterday he plans to stay here for at least a year, I doubt that will actually happen. When he does move across the country, he wishes to return for one weekend every month to see the boys. Again, I'm fine with this scenario but where will he stay that weekend? He has no family. Will he just be taking the boys to a hotel? Again, I don't think he actually thought this through. This is a problem I slash we will tackle when he does decide to move. Lastly, the mediator said it could take about two months to finalize everything. He and I spoke after the session to go over some facts and figures, and I brought up the tentative date for the finalization of our marriage. I told him that two months was a good amount of time to save some money and find an apartment, and he agreed. I also reminded him about his promise not to return to visit her until our divorce is finalized, or he has a place to live. He quickly became frustrated, telling me that he knew, and tried to shut down the conversation. I told him I was happy that we were on the same page, but I was not budging. If you leave while you still live here, you cannot come back, that is something we both agreed to. Now the big question remains, who does he break a promise with? Obviously it's a win-win for me, stay home and help me with the kids while you save $500 and plus and move out quickly, or leave to visit her, and I get you out of the house sooner. 
I'm happy with either decision. I just want to move on with my life and enjoy my moments with my children. Out for a swim. When I took this dive into the Reddit community, I had no idea where I would land. I thought my feet would hit the shallow ground, and I would be ankle deep on the banks in an uncomfortable swimsuit all along. But to my surprise, this deep ocean of Reddit readers has engulfed me in their warm waters, and I am surrounded by a sea of support. For this, I am thankful. I am also so touched by the droves of people who have reached out for advice, or offer their own experiences as lessons to be learned. To the one seeking advice, I tell them, I am not an expert swimmer. I'm merely doggy paddling through the sea of hurt and confusion. Please don't use me as a sign of strength. Because the truth is, I am not strong, I am you. I am the woman who reads because they are suspicious of late-night phone calls her husband takes. I am the spouse who has shouldered the entire family and is in desperate need of support. I am the woman who misses affection from her husband, who is next to her in bed every night. I am. You. To those people who have yet to catch their partner cheating but are suspicious, trust your gut. Cheating is a coward's choice, so be braver than they are, and face the truth. To the spouse who is the fixer, and takes on every challenge, take a step back. When you help, even with good intentions, you are actually just hurting yourself. To the spouse who has tried everything to receive physical attention from their partner, but to no avail, their affection is probably going somewhere else. These are lessons I wish I could have told myself months, if not years ago. Listen to me. Or just listen to you. To the sharks in the water who call me a bad mom, a crazy bitch, fake, or even just think I'm out of my mind, you will find no blood in this water. So it's best you move on and find a thread where the op will chum the water for you. It's so very easy to read and judge, and I understand this. I just hope that if this ever happens to you, you will be as brave, logical and composed as you expect others to be. If not, you will find sharks circling you as well. So, I hope you are as strong of a swimmer as you claim to be. If you are still reading, my saga slash survival continues. Our final mediation papers will arrive this week. We were able to settle everything at the last meeting on 1 slash 12, and the documents just need our signature. After that, the divorce papers need to be served and filed with the county. Then, we await our court date, which will be sent via Zoom. Yes, it is a bit anticlimactic, but it will still serve its purpose of divorcing. He has started finally, to look for an apartment, but nothing is to his satisfaction. Maybe he is being picky, or maybe he is comfortable living in the basement. Either way, once the divorce papers are stamped, he needs to be gone. He has started making phone calls to her during the day, and I can hear him giggling downstairs. I'm happy he is happy, I really am. That isn't passive-aggressive. I know I will be happy one day, too. He just got there first, and that's okay. I feel like my life is in limbo right now. I can't move forward because I'm chained to the past. I'm hoping his move will be soon. I suspect he wants out for February 1st, so he can go visit her for Valentine's Day. I hope for his sake and mine that he makes his deadline. I will update again after I receive the mediation paperwork and the divorce papers are served. I'm sure that will stir up a lot of thought and emotion, so I'm certain it will be a doozy. Till then, I'll keep doggy paddling. Souvenirs If you have been following along, then you know that there was a chance he would leave for Valentine's Day to visit her. Well, he left this morning. He told the kids, I'm going, as he walked out the door, leaving me to explain a few hours later that he had to leave to work when they started asking for him. I've learned that I can't have expectations. Just because I would try to be more honest with the kids doesn't mean he would. I was really proud of the fact that I didn't even engage him in the discussion slash debate slash argument of going. Yes, I had loudly vocalized some feelings a week ago when he told me he was going, but I have not engaged him about it since. All I asked was for his flight info so that I would know when to expect him back. He did not provide this information, maybe he thinks I'm not entitled to it. Either way, he left, and I was fine. While we had the conversation multiple times in which he agreed that he would not visit her again till he had an apartment, he has reneged on that agreement. Shocker. He claims that he has every right to be here which he does legally, and he can do as he pleases. He made a down payment on an apartment a few days ago, but says he doesn't know when he will be moving. What? The bills he pays in the house are less than the child support he will have to pay, so I think his decision to stay longer might be a financial one. I've offered him any piece of furniture he wants in the house. I even offered to pay for one slash two of the cost of bunk beds for the boys. I just need him to leave. I have no idea why he is dragging his feet. 
But, I learned through a mutual friend and former work colleague of theirs that she recently had COVID. When I say recently, I mean the board of health from her state said, she could stop quarantining three days ago. But what about her kids that are in the home? Were they living there during her quarantine? Are they positive? Perhaps they are asymptomatic. Will my STBX be bringing me and our children home a COVID-19 souvenir? I'm livid. COVID insensitivity. For all those messaging me with concern and for updates, I apologize for my tardiness. It has been a heartbreaking two weeks. To amend for my absence, I will be posting two updates tonight. Let me start from the beginning. My STBX left for his getaway on 2-12 and did not return until 2-15. During his blissful vacation, my family and I suffered the great loss of one of our most beloved members to COVID-19. I was a mess. Everyone I love was devastated. I called my STBX on 2-13 and told him the prognosis was not good. It was loud where he was, there were children yelling. He informed me he was outside with her kids. Wow. I can't remember the last time he took our children outside, but I digress. I shouldn't have expected him to care about my bad news, but he was concerned. I guess there's still a decent bone somewhere in him. That concern would not last long, though. Upon his return, as he usually does, he schedules a COVID test. He scheduled one for four days after his return, but due to snow in our area, he did not go. I understand that the weather cannot be controlled. Then he told me he rescheduled for four days later, and then did not go. When I questioned him, his response was, I feel fine. I suspected that since she probably got a negative COVID test shortly before his arrival, he felt safe not getting one. Not until Monday 3-1 did he finally get tested. A full two weeks later. Why? You know my family just suffered a terrible loss to COVID, how could you be so reckless and insensitive? The insensitive question is rhetorical. I obviously know the answer already. The real monster. The day is approaching. Large boxes containing new furniture to be assembled are being delivered to the house daily. The sounds of packing tape being ripped from the spool flood the house every evening. He's moving out, I'm overjoyed, I'm so happy that I've actually started engaging him in conversation. Yes, we have to chat to figure out child support and scheduling, but now I'm so ecstatic he's leaving I even ask about his move. I feel like a kid at Christmas. While we were discussing his move, what he would be taking from the home and a schedule for seeing the children, I asked if he planned to visit her. No, this wasn't me prying, we needed to set an overnight and weekend schedule for the kids, and I was hoping to be accommodating to any trips he had planned. But then my curiosity got the best of me, but for a good reason, our children. I asked if she planned to come here to meet the kids. He replied in the affirmative and said she may come. Well, that is good for you both, but I would like to meet her before she meets the children. He went silent. I could tell he was rolling thoughts around in his head, or perhaps trying to figure a way out of the situation, but he came up empty. He honestly wanted to know why I needed to meet her. Excuse me, come again? Do you really think I would let my children spend time with someone I didn't know? I'm the mother who interviews babysitters, why would you think I wouldn't want to meet her? He claims to be worried that I won't be civil, but he knows me better than that. I have nothing to gain by being rude to her. It's just ammo. I refuse to play that game. Plus, why would I care? I don't want him. That's your prize now, honey, congrats. But he recognizes that he can't stop me in this. I have every right to meet her as he would to meet someone I am dating. When it comes to the kids, he slash we can't keep secrets. I think the real concern about our meeting is this, she will realize I'm not the horrible monster he made me out to be. His plans of assassinating my character to build himself up or to receive pity from her, and the constant gaslighting will be revealed. She will see that I am not pining over him, quarreling with him, and that I'm genuinely a good person. Maybe she will see that he might be the real monster. Like father, like son. My STBX was quiet. More quiet than usual. Almost sulking. I don't understand his motivations anymore, and what he actually cares about, so I left it alone. Not my business to care and comfort anymore, right? That evening, after the children went to bed, he sat alone at the dining room table. It was as if he was waiting for me to address him. I did not. Sulk, that's your issue, not mine. After he received no attention from me, he made a big announcement. He claims he told everyone what happened between us, including his father. Then, oddly enough, he started to cry. Full, ugly tears. I thought these were tears of embarrassment and shame. He then proceeded to tell me the conversation he had with his father was the first time his dad had actually acted like a father toward him. While that statement in itself is unsettling, it is also confusing. 
I'm guessing his father supported him. I know if this was my son I'd support him, but I also have some strong words about how he went about this, and how he should probably proceed in the future. But it looks like he received 100% support. So, while I understand, I don't understand. Something was wrong here. Last week was my youngest son's birthday. I'd asked my STBX if he would like to invite his father over for cake. He texted him several times with no response. He learned through their conversation slash confession last night that his father was in another state for work. Okay, that is understandable. But here is the kicker, he went away with a new girl he is dating. Why is this strange, you ask? He just asked his wife of 30 years for a divorce at the end of January. So, this makes me think, is adultery a learned behavior? My FIL abandoned my STBX when he was nine years old, the same age as my eldest son now. Is there a pattern here? Or is all this just a crazy coincidence? I could not help myself, so I messaged my MIL. She confirmed they were divorcing. I asked if there was any infidelity, and she claimed, to her knowledge, no. But I know better. She said that my file started to withdraw from her. He started picking fights for no reason and avoided interacting with her last fall. Then, in January, he said he wanted a divorce so that he could find himself. A man who is in his 60s, close to retirement, needs to find himself. Sounds like a cop-out to me. But now that I've learned there is another woman, which my MIL does not know, I understand that this bloodline of men are truly selfish and unfit partners. I know all the comments will tell me to tell my MIL about the infidelity on his part and I plan on doing so. I just need a little more information before I break the news to her. Moving trucks and spilled tea. It happened. Finally. He's gone. My basement is so empty and quiet that it echoes. The day he moved, a box truck pulled up to my house, and my children ran to the window to watch. I didn't know how to distract them as I was working. I was able to pull them away from the window with the promise of treats once they were at the table to do schoolwork. My youngest, though, would not budge. After 45 minutes of loading, the truck pulled away, and my STBX drove off. My youngest came away from the window, looking sad. I immediately talked to him and tried to comfort him. After a few moments he asked, is the truck coming back? I was confused. I told him that we were staying here, and no one else was moving. Apparently he wasn't upset that daddy was leaving, he just wanted the truck. I'm not sure how I should feel about this. I made appointments with a child therapist for both of my kids. While they seem fine now, I'm not sure what the future holds for their mental state. I'm afraid this will be repressed, and issues will arise down the road. His friends have been reaching out to me. Now that they know what happened, I get text messages and Facebook messages asking how I am. I know, in reality, they're just being nosy. They may care a little, but they just want me to spill the tea. Well, I put the kettle on. I wasn't surprised to learn that my STBX wasn't completely honest with them. He failed to mention traveling during a pandemic to visit her. I guess that would make him look reckless. Selfish? Idiotic? The wives of his friends are in shock. They considered my STBX a friend who could be trusted, a man who had it all together. Basically they trusted my STBX would be a good influence on their husbands. Boy were they wrong? Concerning my MIL, I have not told her about it. This is because I don't have any real information. What I did tell her though, was to do some investigating to see if he was having an affair. This would be to her benefit as her state has adultery laws. They are still legally married and living in the same house, so to my knowledge, the law applies, but she seems hesitant. I think she is just afraid to find out the truth, and then she has to look at him every day. This, I understand. No person's spouse should have to experience that. I know it was gut-wrenching for me, and perhaps many of you reading can relate as well. I just don't want to be the one to tell her. Perhaps this is because I'm still upset I had to find out on my own, and my STBX was too much of a coward to come clean. Why should a cheating spouse get the thrill of cheating, and be relieved of the burden of having to confess?